Hello and welcome to News Click. The urban local bodies in Tamil Nadu will soon have the elections in a single phase on February 19. After a delay of 10 years, citing various reasons during the previous ADMK regime, the local bodies have not had any representatives. So to discuss more about the elections, their outcomes and the prospects, we have with us Professor Ramu Manivanan of the University of Madras. So to begin with, the uh, local body polls, the urban local body polls are scheduled on February 9th. So with the okay. BMK government uh, completing only nine months and the uh, okay. anti-interment sector being uh, ruled out, what are the issues you think will be deciding the for this election? I think like uh, the first and foremost thing is like, the uh, the general disaffection with the previous government uh, was reflected in the uh, the last local ele- government elections as well that was one of the reasons why the the previous government led by Adapadi Palanisamy ADMK government did not complete the election process uh, to the uh, several local bodies in Tamil Nadu itself and then the urban local elections so that was clearly a, a, an indication of the way that uh, the local body elections would turn against the then ruling government. So that's the first advantage for the present government itself. And as you said, it is only nine months and uh, they have not earned any major, uh, uh, what you call as the disaffection or lack of uh, uh, sympathy or support for the government. And like, you know, they, they have not uh, earned the um, uh, hill will of the masses in the nine months. This can happen. Even in a uh, few months, this can happen. But this did not happen in the case of uh, DMK. And um, nor, they said, nor I would say like, you know, there's a tremendous goodwill and not like that. But the general assessment is that like, you know, this is um, uh, the government is working. The government is there and this government is visible. And uh, so that's very important aspect that goes in favor of the DMK government led by Mr. Stalin at this time. And uh, another fact is that in the the leftover local bodies and the rural areas, and uh, the DMK had virtually swept in the few a few months back actually. So that was much earlier one, and that was another indication. And uh, so it's a uh, I, I suppose now. Like, you know, the uh, the urban local bodies also, it is most likely to go in favor of the DMK because of the, uh, the trends, as it indicate. And also, like, you know, there's uh, any local elections or the by-elections held uh, between the two polling uh, points as the tenure of the government, uh, usually it goes in favor of the uh, ruling party. But in this case, in the local government is that, and uh, they also know, both BMK as well as the people know, if the government's program has to reach or like, you know, to put it in another sense, like, you know, the, uh, the money has to flow, the government uh, funding has to reach to the lower and local government. And they need to have a kind of a, um, undisturbed flow of the uh, programs and the money and the projects. So they uh, they are also campaigning on the same ground. So this is my most likely to attract the voters and particularly the parties to rally with the DMK government at this time. Yeah, sir. Uh, as you said, uh, the government is visible in the last nine months on different uh, occasions of flooding or even during the pandemic, the second wave of the pandemic as well. But uh, the DMK is uh, taking forward a campaign in which they accuse the DMK of not fulfilling the poll promises which were assured during the last election campaign. So what do you uh, make out of it? Will that uh, uh, turn it into votes or will that uh, help the ADMK? See, I think if this campaign saying that like, you know, the government has not fulfilled its promises, like, you know, after four years of the government being in power, if you say that uh, thing, it, it gains certain credibility. But if the government is in power for only nine months, and then if you say that the poll promises have not been fulfilled, but like, you know, this is a, it, the argument doesn't go the full will, full length. It goes halfway, actually. It, why I say it halfway is what it can, it may convince the ADMK voters and supporters, but it might not really convince the neutral voters because like, you know, the neutral voters are going to look at the other aspects. I mean, like, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not at all saying not fulfilling a promise is not a right thing for the DMK. 
But you know, DMK is also measuring it, the challenges of such promises and during this nine months, actually, with the COVID uh, situation and the financial crisis. And they are, they are trying to uh, understand about their own promises and the challenges uh, surrounding the promises. But I would still think, but if by four years, if the government has not uh, fulfilled its promises, and the DMK should stand to face the test of the old test. But like, you know, in the nine months, and it was too early to kind of like, you know, judge them and throw them out actually from the local government. Actually. So I think like the benefit of the doubt would certainly go with the DMK than with the opposition. And then opposition, I don't mistake the opposition's argument because like, you know, they are doing the right thing by saying what DMK has not been able to do. And, uh, and uh, it is their job. The opposition is meant to say that. The opposition is meant to find out what are the full promises and what has been fulfilled and what has not been um, addressed. And like, you know, at least the DMK should uh, talk about these things and should say and uh, explain to the people and to the uh, uh, government saying that, like, you know, where we are able to meet those promises and where we are not able to meet and what are the challenges? Like in case of the need, actually, the government is trying its full length to um, see where. Then in case of 1,000 rupees to the women and uh, 1,000 rupees to the um, uh, women as a support in the rural areas. So I, I think these are all like, you know, big budget issues, particularly like, you know, uh, honorarium uh, or a support uh, funding of rupees 1,000. It's a huge budget is needed. So they may have said it before getting the grasp of the entire challenge. But I suppose now, like, you know, uh, if this argument is still unanswered by the three and a half years and the DMK will have to explain that after three years. So do you see the split in the uh, opposition unity with uh, BJP contesting alone, the PMK contesting alone, and of course the ADMK is also contesting alone? Will this factor uh, sir, support the DMK or favor the DMK? Because in the last two elections, the 2019 assembly elections, I mean, 2019 general election and uh, the assembly election, the ADMK was uh, burdened by the presence of uh, BJP, to be honest, or that was the general opinion. So with ADMK yes. offloading their uh, burden, do you see an, an improvement in the tally of uh, ADMK? No, with or without unity, the contest is all between DMK and the ADMK. And then, or DMK and PMK, and the DMK and the other opposition party. It is not, uh, if all the oppo opposition parties are also united, and they would fare much worse than what it is today, actually. Because um, even at the uh, assembly elections and the parliamentary elections, the support mechanism is a very at the top of the system, not at the bottom, actually. And not at the bottom means like, you know, at the people's level and the ground level, they are all committed only to the party. And then the leaders and the political parties have an alliances. Therefore, you are able to transfer about like, you know, 60 percent of votes, not more than that. But that 80 percent of votes will, will stay with the party only in the local government election. And they are very strong with the low affiliation. And but actual question you should ask is that is gathering. I mean, they are now full. They're getting double digit. They're from a single digit. They're getting a double digit, and like you know, they might even get a triple digit in certain places. So that number we have to watch. And then another thing to watch is that, like you know, within the ADMK, because the cadre also know that, like you know, it's going to be a long wait for the party to come back in power. And then the party is already split between the ADMK led by Adapadi Palnisami, the what you call this like, you know, Amamuka, AMMK led by uh, Sashikala's uh, nephew, then Mr. Dinakaran, actually. So you have to see that division, that is much more acute crisis for the ADMK than the split with the uh, BJP with the other parties. But then, uh, Dinakaran's uh, AMK might also gather some seats in certain places, will also cut into the vote bank of the AADMK in many, many places, particularly in the southern districts. It's very, and then in Tanjur and Madurai and Taini, and then like, you know, in certain other areas, they are very strong, Trichy and these places. And uh, so you have to count that factor. And uh, ultimately, BJP is not very sick. BJP's strength com comes from the power at the center. 
and then like you know the stick that they wield in their hands against the aadmk so like you know it is it is not based on any other thing but they are mobilizing that mobilization is like you know not sufficient to pose a threat or challenge to the return of the day i mean like you know the dmk gaining a greater supremacy of the uh, the local bodies in the urban areas that's all we have time for today thank you for watching news thank you thank you